Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to go through how to use Pygame and build your own version of Snake, the old school retro game that you would have found on the old Nokia phones way before iPhones. Now the whole point of this uh, video is to try and show students that you can follow a tutorial online and build some really cool games quite quickly. So I'm going to find my tutorial which I found which was this Pygame tutorial and yeah let's jump on in and follow along. So to start, I made a bit of a meme here for us. Um, basically, there's a bad joke, but that's what Snake is. So Snake's going to be trying to go through, finding some food, and every time it gets a little bit of food, it grows in its size. So the learning intentions that we have today is understanding the basics of Python programming and the use of the Pygame library. You are not expected to understand every single piece. So you're basically expected to sort of follow the tutorial and then look at the things that you can modify. We then want to develop a simplified version of the retro game using Python and then learn about classes, objects, event handling, and also how the game loop sort of works in Python. So we're going to unpackage all of that in this. We're then going to apply some mathematical concepts to make the gaming mechanics work behind the scenes. And yeah, it's a pretty cool little um, tutorial in my opinion. So the first thing we need to do is install Pygame, which is really easy on Windows. If you press the Windows key and type in CMD, You'll get this and then all you need to do is type in pip install my game that will go on the internet and then download it for you so pip install pi game is all you need to type for a mac it's a little different you have to type in python 3.12 m pip install pi game inside of the terminal which is a little bit different but it still does pretty much the same thing cool so now the next step is we need to find the game. So what happens inside the game, it looks like this. And if you look at it for a while, I'll just give you a couple of um, seconds just to take it all in. But what you should be finding is that the snake's moving around on the screen really, really fast. And what happens is eventually Every time it grabs the food, it increases by one pixel. So it starts off with just one pixel, and every time it gets gets that, sorry, when it gets the food the first time, it now becomes two pixels long. Once it's gotten um, bigger and bigger, you can then uh, eventually take up too much of the screen, and then you might potentially run into yourself, which is the objective of not doing. So different versions of Snake work um, differently. So some have a boundary mechanic. So if you hit the edge, it actually ends the game as well. Others have it where it sort of hits the edge and then it comes out the other side and keeps going, which is fine. Um, the one I think we're doing today actually does that, which is cool. It, everything's got different values and different ways that um, sort of happen. From the player controls, the only thing that it can control um, when you're playing this is literally up, down, left and right. Uh, you have no control of the speed of the snake, which is happening based off the ticks that are happening behind the scenes. And yeah, basically what happens is you need to think about the three different objects that are occurring. So there's the snake, what's happening there. So there's the position of the head of the snake. When that head hits the fruit, something happens. So the snake grows. Then you might want to think about um, how the snake is moving around on the screen and then how it's sort of refreshing itself each time as it's going. Then with the fruit, you might be thinking about what how does the fruit sort of get generated? So how does it randomly spawn? How does it know not to hit where the snake is? That's the other thing. So when it's generating itself, how does it know not to go to a position where the snake already exists? Which is kind of interesting. Um, and then there's a whole heap of other sort of things that are happening behind the scenes um, in this. So is the rendering happening? What's the speed of the clock ticks um, each time that, that that's happening? And yeah, this guy was pretty good. He actually finished snake, which is pretty awesome. So. Quick disclaimer, you're not expected to know how to code this. That is definitely not the objective here. The idea here is to appreciate the code and then have some understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. And we will be doing this in PyCharm again because, I, again, I love PyCharm. So just pause the video, have a think about what the objects are and think about what actually actions that the, the, um, the different objects have to do. So you've got the snake, and like we said, the snake can move around on the screen, the snake can eat the food, um, and then it needs to make sure it doesn't hit itself. You then have the fruit, 
and the fruit um, basically um, has to be eaten by the snake and then it has to make sure that the fruit um, doesn't get spawned on top of the snake. And lastly, you've got the background, which allows the snake and the fruit to move around on, which is pretty cool. So we'll be following this tutorial from Kai. Um, highly recommend to watch it. Um, watch it after I've done this. I think that'd be a really good learning experience so you can see, um, get better insights of how um, they were developed. Um, it's a really, really good video. It, it's exceptional how they go through and talk about the snake. And that's the whole purpose behind this video is to show my students that they can um, basically follow a tutorial and build their own version of Snake, which is really, really cool. So the first thing is I want you to open up um, a new file and then basically create these parts. So just pause the video and build that in my time. Cool. So I'm going to do it now as well. So we'll open up my charm, make a new video, a new project, sorry, and we're going to go Snake. I'm going to inherit all the global packages that come with that. We're good to go. Let's shrink that down. Let's hide that totally because we won't need anything from there. Let's delete that and we're good to go. Blank slate. So first step, we want to import the library. So we're going to import Pygame. Then we want to import Sys. Then we want to import import random now that we've got that we then want to make a class called snake and we're going to put an object into the snake and then we want to def init underscore um, the self in our class then we want to get head position self put pass so these are just temporary variables for pass uh, sorry not variables operations the operation pass basically just makes sure that the, the program will still work um, and allows you to come back to them later so this is what we call object oriented programming so we're going to write all the methods that we want to deal with first before we actually even code so now i'm going to do turn and when we turn we want to use our self but also a point that we're going to turn around so what direction do we want to turn in then we're going to have a move function that's going to take self then we want to have a reset function so if the snake hits itself game over dude but um how does it actually reset and keep going on then we want to define a draw function that takes self and then a surface then we want to handle the keys. With self. And I'll put next up there, that should be pass. That should be our new line. And again, pass so we don't have an error. Cool, so that's the whole, all the different functions that happen inside of a snake. And we have a self self, so that's not ideal. So we'll go self and we're good. Now we need to build the food. So that was the hard part. So we'll go class food and it is an object inside of um, Pygame. And the food we want to init. So we initialize it. With the self and we pass. Then we want to randomize the position of where the fruit is going to go. And then we want to def draw the self on the surface. Then we're going to go screen width. Equal 400. Screen height. 400 and then grid size equal 20 grid width equals screen height divided by grid size and then 
red eyes equals screen width divided by grid size. And then we're going to go up is equal to zero or one. I'm oh, sorry, negative one, because remember when we're dealing with uh, canvases, up is down because it starts in the top left hand corner. And then down is equal to zero or one, which is actually the reverse. And then left is the same as normal in the Cartesian plane. So left is equal to negative one comma zero. And right is equal to one comma zero. Cool, so that's all the different uh, grid functions um, and whatnot built. And then what's the cool part here is these are all the packages that we've built um, for class and food. And then underneath here, these are the global variables. And then our global code will go underneath this so that we have um, clear understanding of what's gonna happen next. Cool, so we've got the draw. Um, we need to build one more um, global method. So this isn't part of the class for snake or food. This is going to draw the grid. So to do that, we need to def draw the grid. And then we want to draw the grid onto a surface that we haven't built yet. Now, the way that this works is we're going to have uh, a checkered pattern. So it's going to have yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, and so on. So the way that works is we're going to go for y in range of zero comma int grid height and then we're going to go for x in range from 0 int grid width so we're going to use the constants that we've just defined down here and that's why they're all in capitals then this is a really cool math function if you do x plus y and then you mod it by 2 if that equals equals two, uh, zero, you've done something right. So it basically means that the color will be one. And then this will get, this is a function that allows you to do a checkered point, uh, pattern. So now we're going to draw a rectangle, so a small little grid rectangle that's going to be 20 by 20. So 20 pixels long and 20 pixels um, high. So to do that, we then go pygame.rect. And we want to go x times the grid size, comma y times the grid size, comma. And then we want to make a coordinate, so grid size, comma, grid size. And that should give the dimensions of the grid. And another rectangle at the end, oh, sorry, bracket at the end. And we're good to go. Then we want to draw that. So we're then going to go pie game, got draw our rectangle onto the surface. And then this is the color. We want to make it 93. Brackets, sorry, here as well. 93, comma, 216. So this is the RGB value that we've done before. 228 brackets, and then we want to draw a rectangle. So what happens here is this will now take the rectangle that we've drawn. Uh, so this describes what the rectangle should look like. And then this physically draws this inside the gaming engine. So this is a bit abstract. So this talks about, I want a rectangle that's at this coordinate here, and then it's going to have a 20, it's going to be 20 by 20 as its measurement. Then this actually draws the rectangle on the surface um, with this particular color, and then that's the rectangle that is going to be drawn, which is pretty cool. So then that's if it's um, mod zero, we need to then do the opposite. So there's another side to this if we want to do else. So we want to now look um, the other side of it, which is basically if it's the other color. So I'm going to cheat here. I'm super lazy. 
really um, and paste that in. And what he does is go rectangle, rectangle, same thing. And then instead of the surface at that position, now I'm going to draw a rectangle, rectangle. Oops, I need to put it there. And then we've got a new RGB value. So what should happen is we now have a different color. So 194, 205. And then as we go, there are no errors. Critical, it's just a warning and a weak warning and a few typos. So we've done self, self again. This one. Why IDE is really handy. And then it's saying my pep isn't good here. I'm going to reformat the file and then it goes through. And then it's saying name should be capitalized with this convention, which is not quite what they do here, but let's just see what happens. And then the inputs are missing, which is fine. So now we're going to go down the bottom underneath the global bit here. And we're going to main, make it main lines. We're going to go def main bracket bracket snaky byte and then go pygame.init. Open the brackets. Cool. So that initializes and builds the pygame. We're then going to have a thing called the clock. Now, the clock is going to control the pace of the snake. So to do that, we go clock and we pull out from the game pygame library from the time um, section a clock. That's exactly the same as what we've done before with Turtle, but this time we've actually built a clock that works around in the background. We then want to build a screen. So that's going to be what happens where everything gets displayed on. Get there. So we're going to go pygame display dot set underscore mode. And we're going to go screen underscore width screen underscore height and then we want to go zero comma 32 oh, I don't like that ah, let's just stop it there double brackets and how good is that Pipe PyCharm has gone through and worked out the, the size, the flags, and then the depth for it should be 32, which is pretty cool. All right, next bit, we would then want to do the surface inside of this. So we're going to go the surface of Pygame that we're going to render, and we're going to go pygame.surface, open the brackets, and go screen.getSize. Then we're going to go surface is now equal to the surface dot convert. And then now we want to draw the grid that we just built before. So that calls this function that we defined up here. And that's what's really cool. We can see the one usage, click on that, and then it comes down and shows where that code was used. And then after we've done all that, we actually want to then start the function. So that's what the main function does. So now we have one usage of the main, which is down there. We've only got a few imports and a few different capitalization conventions. Let's click on that. Reformat it. And then clock hasn't been used yet, which is fine. So it's very important to make sure you check the errors as you're building, just making sure that you're sort of on top of it. So you don't have anything unexpected at the end. So now we need to build a snake and the food. And then also we want to build the score and then um, basically get the game going. So we're going to use a, a, an infinite loop because the game should go on forever and ever. Um, there are different ways of doing this. Basically, the, um, it's not so bad, but the idea is that we're checking to see that it's true and going from there. So inside the main line here, we want to build a snake and then what we're going to do is build an instance of snake so that's what we did back up the top and then we're going to go food and then that is equal to food is 
isn't liking it. So unresolved error. I'm going to change this a little bit. So I'm going to deviate here. Um, usually what I personally do is um, we do capital letters for the different classes. So snake and capital F food. Yep, that's that. And then down here. Cool. I think, yeah, so it's a little bit different from the original tutorial, but that's okay. Different ways, different work. So then now we're going to go then score is equal to zero. And that's the score. And then while true, we're going to execute our code. So the clock is going to tick. And then inside that, we're going to set the frame rate. So we're going to go 10 frames. Then we're going to handle the different events and we're going to go to screen.lit surface brackets zero comma zero then we want the pi game display update cool so hopefully we've got it Awesome. So that's what the window looks like now. And then now you can see what the sort of the grids are that we were talking about. So you can change the RGB values here if you want. It doesn't really matter. And this is not going to work, which is fine because we haven't totally finished the code. But that's just a good start. So you can see what you're playing in the game of how this might look. Cool. So now we want to actually build the snake so that there is an objective and the game sort of runs along. So to start, we're gonna go self.length is equal to one. So when the game initializes, snake is only gonna have a self a length of one. Then you're gonna have a position array. Now this is basically gonna check, or well, sorry, have a list of all the different um, spots that the snake is currently in. So as the snake grows, this will get bigger and bigger. The current position when it starts is going to be in the very dead smack middle of the um, screen. So what we're going to do is screen width divided by two for the first X coordinate. And then for the Y coordinate, we're going to go screen height divided by two. Those brackets line up, those brackets line up. So now for the direction, we're going to go self.direction and we're going to make it go in a random position. So we're going to go random to pull it from the random library. And we're going to use the choice option, which we haven't used before. And this is really cool. We can either go up, we can go down, we can go left, or we can go right. Um, so that should now have a random uh, little library that then chooses the different up, down, left, and right. So then we want to set the color of the snake self the color and we will set the snake to be 17 24 in the um our g's the green and then as the blue it will be 47. cool so the snake had now has an initialization function so that should make that process a bit easier when we start the snake and now we want to go to the next step which is getting the head position so get head position is where the, where is the actual head so that it can be questioned, I'm guessing, when the fruit's moving around the joint. So the fruit's probably going to check to see where the head position is. And then if it is inside um, the same as the fruit, it's then going to eat the snake. Um, the snake's going to eat the fruit from that. So that should be pretty easy. What happens there is you're going to pull out from self is you're going to look inside the positions that were created in the init function and you're going to get the first element in the array which is what the zero does so from positions at position zero um, we're just going to return that so return self.positions at zero we're then going to do turn which is a little bit more trickier so if the self.length is greater than one and the point at position zero at 
position zero times negative one, comma, and then the point at position one, square bracket times negative one, close the brackets, is equal to cell dot direction. So what's going to happen here is you're going to pass in a point, I'm guessing, and the point's going to have an x and a y direction that it's pointing in. And if that's the same as the direction that the snake's currently going, then you don't actually want to do anything. You just want to return. It's not going to do anything. Otherwise, if it's not, we then change the direction is now equal to that point that was passed through. And that point will be one of these options down here. So up, down, left, and right. So if they're not pointing the same way, then you change. Otherwise, um, upgrade and swap the direction to equal to the new point. Cool. So we've now done the initialization of the snake. We've got the head position. We've now turned the snake. We probably want to make the snake move, reset, draw, and handle the um, keys. So to make the snake move, we want to get rid of it. And the snake's um, basically going to change its direction. And when it moves, the, the array that happens behind it is like a big freight train. So you probably want to work out where the current head position is first, which is what we're doing here. So first step is we go to the current position is equal to self.get head position. Then we're going to get the direction that you're currently going. So x, y, self.direction. And then we want to make a new coordinate. So this new position is where um, it's going to go eventually. And the, the position for that is a little bit trickier. So just follow along here. Bracket, bracket, bracket. Uh, current position at zero. Plus, okay, so it's going to move across a certain distance, which is what the X grid is. Size, bracket, bracket, mod, the screen width. Bracket, comma. Current um, y coordinate, which is what one does, plus y times the grid size, bracket, bracket, mod screen underscore height, close the bracket. So now we have a new position that tells where it's going to go. So as it's moving, we probably want to check whether or not the snake has hit itself. So this gets a little bit trickier. So underneath this one, we then probably want to check to see if it's hit or if it's not. So if the length of self dot positions is greater than two and new position that we just worked out is in self dot positions all the things from after two because if you think about snake the head and the first bit after it aren't never going to be able to hit each other it's always going to be the one after that that you're going to have the three and then actually hit so two and afterwards square brackets so if it's inside those different things um, we then want to reset. So self dot reset the snake, which we haven't done yet. Else, we're now going to go to self dot positions, insert. I'm going to put in a new snake, um, the new coordinate at the top. So at position zero is the new head of the snake. Then if the length of self dot positions is greater than self dot length. Snakey bite. 
to go self dot positions off, which will then remove the back end of the tail. Now that's really important um, as the thing's moving along. Basically, the last element inside the original um, array for snakes basically needs to come off at the tail. Cool. Yep. That's pretty much it. So now we've done that, we now need to do the reset. So to reset this, I'm going to go self.length is equal to one. Then self.positions now equal to square brackets, open bracket, bracket, screen, underscore width, divide by two, close the brackets, comma, screen, underscore, height, divide by two, square brackets, and self dot Direction equals random dot choice, open brackets, you can go up, down, left, or right. So that has all the different positions that you can sort of choose. And now we need to also draw the snake. Down here, we'll P in self dot positions. So going through every single the body of the snake that's what positions does we want to draw separate rectangles so r equals high game dot rect so this builds an abstract version of what the rectangle should look like for the body parts and we want to go from the position that we're currently looking at so p is actually each of the different blocks of the body and you want to get the x coordinate first which is what p0 does inside of square brackets then if you go p square brackets one that then does the y coordinate of the snake and then when you build the, the actual um grid width uh, sorry the width and the height of the um the body part it's going to be the width sorry grid size twice the bracket close the bracket cool. so now that's built we then want to draw the rectangle onto the surface we're going to go pi game dot draw dot rect and we're going to draw onto the surface self dot color we set the color at the top and then that rectangle is going to build we then also want to go pygame.draw rect surface and we're going to put in this color here with the same rectangle 93 216 28 comma r And that's the width of the rectangle coming through afterwards. So that's the snake um, drawn handled. Now we just need to handle the keys of the snake. So this is um, a little bit more um, interesting. So what happens in the, the Pi game library behind the scenes is it has basically um, an event tr chat tracker that has a list of all the different keystrokes that have occurred. So we're gonna go for event in pygame.event.get snakey byte. So then if the event.type is equal to pygame.quit snakey byte, we're gonna to go to pygame quit. And then system.exit. So that wraps up the game. So that handles this while true um, part down here. While true. And then you want to do all this different stuff. Basically, this bit here handles that. So then you've got a way of exiting the game. Underneath that, then we then want to check to see if it, the key, what different keys have been pressed. So if that's um, equal to quit, we do that. 
elif the events dot pi is equal to pi gain dot key down. So that means a key has been pressed. You're, we're now going to do a huge if statement that's going to check all the different keys. And there's only four you can choose. So there's up, down, left, and right. So if the event dot key is equal to pi gain dot key down, snaky byte self dot turn up. So it's going to do the up um, option that we chose before. If then the event dot key is equal to pi gain. Um, sorry, that should be up. Up. Uh, this is down. Sorry. Key underscore. That's true. We're going to go self dot turn down. Elif event dot key is equal to pi gain dot k underscore left snaky bind self dot turn left. Elif event dot key is equal to pi game dot k underscore right snaky byte self dot turn underscore right cool oh, so that's all the key bindings handled there so now you should be able to um, handle the keys press all the different um, up down left and right and that should handle that which is really really cool so we have all the different um, bits of the snake. We have the reset, we have the handle keys. Now we're just missing some of the last bits um, down the bottom. So we want to now build all the food stuff. So the food initiation, we want to go self.position. And we want to equal that. Zero, comma, zero. Then we're going to go self dot color. So the, the fruit hopefully will be a different color, and that's going to equal two three three comma one six three comma forty nine. Then self dot randomize position. Now the randomized position self dot position should equal random dot rand int and then we want to have the grid width times the grid size so that's going to give you a random position somewhere on this screen go here random dot rand int zero comma grid width minus one close the brackets times the grid size then we wanted to do the y coordinate so it's gonna be random dot rand int in brackets zero comma grid underscore height minus one So 
expect a type int and got a float instead. So the grid width seems to be getting a float instead of an int. So let's change that back. Grid width and grid height. So I'm going to be a bit lazy here. I'm just going to type faster. Go int like this. Let's fix that problem um, and then grid size. So we've got our errors down, which is good. Hopefully that should handle that issue. Now we've got the food handled. We probably want to do the last bit, which is draw the food. So to do that, it's a little bit technical, but basically we want to do a rectangle again. And we're going to go pygame.rect, which will build the abstract version of the rectangle before we draw it. So it talks about the measurements how it should look. So from itself, you want to get its x coordinate, which is position, which is x position first, then self dot position its y coordinate. Then we want to put in the grid size of the snake. So this is the coordinate first, and then this is the dimensions, so the width and then the height. So that's done there. Be close enough to that as equals. Then now we've built the rectangle. We want to use the rectangle. So pi game dot draw rect on our surface. Self dot color r game dot draw rect surface so 93 216 228 uh, one Oh, and that's why I've just this editor down here. It's really handy to see what's right and what's wrong. So now we have the fruit. We've got the draw built um, mainline. We just need to finish off a little bit in this mainline. So while true, we'll go through the logic here. So we're going to tick at 10 seconds. We then now want to make the snake move. So we're going to do snake dot handle the keys. Then also want to draw the grid. Again, so each time it's going to update itself. So that's the handling of the blitz and then the update. We want to draw the grid of the surface first. So that there's some sort of level of animation going on behind the scenes. Then we want to make the snake move so then if the snake dot get a header position we got a food dot position snake dot length One score is going to increase by one, and then the food um, needs to randomize. So the food then needs to go to a random position. Cool. So then we also want to draw the snake. So snake dot draw on the surface. Food dot draw on the surface. Blit, and then we also we want to upload the, the text um, for the score. So text dot my font dot 
render is the command. And what we're going to do is put in a string here. So we're going to go score, curly bracket, zero, dot format, score. It's going to put a score into it. And it's going to have one. Brackets, comma. Then it's going to go one, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. Let's draw on the food, draw on the snake. Put the text. Screen dot lib text This font is just going to be a mono space. Oh, we're off. So that should be pretty much proof that um, you can build a tutorial from online. What I've done. Yeah, awesome. So the snake works. You can see that it's going through the screen. Um, the score should work on the add on to it. And if you went ran back in on itself, it then does a little reset, which is pretty cool. That's an awesome little tutorial. Um, like I said, I'd highly recommend go watching it now uh, so that you can see all the stuff that I've seen. You might get a few more little insights. Um, but then now for my students, what I would be asking is, can you think of ways that you can extend this? So can you get the fruit to randomly spawn twice? You might want to have uh, multiple fruits. You might want to have little enemy snakes running on. You might want to do a multiplayer version of the snake. So then you can have two snakes going around on the screen at the same time. Um, there's heaps of different options. You might want to change the color. You might want to make a little menu system at the start to set the speed of the snake and how fast it's moving. This is the sort of thing. So if you follow a tutorial just like this and build the snake, you'll definitely pass. That's that's a given. Like you've done the hard work and you've, you've had a go. That's awesome. But then if you're looking for the A's and the B's, what I'm looking for is to try and extend on these tutorials that are out there. And they're awesome. There's heaps of them out there. And you might want to pick, cherry pick and choose different tutorials from each piece to put together. So hopefully that's given you some ideas to think about. Um, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. If you want to, um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe and please go check that video out as well so that you follow um, how they've done it. There's some really, there's other, some other insights that he goes through, which is really, really cool. And this, the link is down below. And yeah, please give me a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video of how to build snake. Um, and yeah, see you again next time on Steam It With Steve. Adios.